on the show. The Income Tax Department conducts surveys at the BBC offices in Delhi and Mumbai, setting off a political debate. China's latest infrastructure push could provoke further conflict with India. We tell you about China's planned railway line that cuts across northern Aksai Chin. BJP has nothing to hide or be afraid of on the controversy over Adani Group. Home Minister Ramit Shah says this and more in a freewheel interview. Maharashtra Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Padnavis claims that NCP Chief Sharad Pawar was aware of Ajit Pawar's short-lived defection to the BJP in 2019. It's a TV9 exclusive. And already hit with massive inflation, Pakistan is now preparing to impose more taxes on the people only to get a bailout package from the IMF. This and more with a comprehensive view of India top angle starts right here, right now. Well, the income tax survey at the BBC offices in Delhi and Mumbai have set off a political debate in the country. Income tax officials surveyed the BBC offices for non-compliance with the transfer pricing rules and its vast diversion of profits. This comes weeks after the controversy over the UK-based broadcaster's documentary series on Prime Minister Narendra Modi. It has been reported that the IT personnel who visited the broadcaster's premises in Delhi and Mumbai looked at documents related to the business operations of the company. Opposition Congress was quick to react to the survey and claimed that the centre is diverting the attention from a JPC probe on Adani. JPC Adani और वहां सरकार बीबीसी के पीछे पड़ी हुई है विनाशकाले विपरीत बुद्धि well, now the BJP hits back at the Congress, calling BBC the most corrupt corporation in the world and that its propaganda and the Congress's agenda go hand in hand. BBC ke agar krit dekhe, jiske udharan mein aapke samakch abhi pesh karunga, to ye pure vishu ki sabse bhrasht bakwas corporation ho gai hai. Aur dukh ki baat ye hai ki BBC ka propaganda aur Congress ka agenda well, now the British Broadcasting Corporation, meanwhile, tweeted to say that it hopes to resolve the matter as soon as possible. Next up, China's latest infrastructure push could provoke further conflict with India. That's right. After causing at least three border standoffs in the recent years, China is at it again. In the latest, a grandiose new railway line which will ultimately connect Xinjiang to Tibet. And here's why this should concern India. This new stretch of rail track will cut through the Aksai Chin. Per reports, China is planning to expand its existing railway network in Tibet. But Beijing's plan also involves transgressing through the Aksai Chin region. It is the easternmost part of the Union territory of Ladakh and it squarely falls under India's territorial domain as per accepted demarcation. Now, since the late 1950s, the region of Aksai Chin has been at the center of the dispute that ultimately provoked a war between India and China in 1962. Well, currently, there are three railway lines in the region. The Qinghai Tibet Railway Line that started in July 2006, the Lhasa Shigatse Line, which began in the year 2014, and the Lhasa Nyingchi Line, which began operations in the June of 2021. This entire railway infrastructure has a total length extending up to nearly 1,500 kilometers. But this new railway line from Shigatse in Tibet to Xinjiang's Houghton province will expand China's railway infrastructure by up to 4,000 kilometers. The first phase is expected to be finished as early as 2025, whereas the rest of the line will be likely completed by 2035. Now, Beijing's new plans of expanding its railways in Tibet when viewed with its other plans, reveal two distinct strategic goals. Number one, it allows the People's Liberation Army to rapidly deploy its forces. And number two, it fulfills Beijing's strategy of culturally assimilating the Tibetan people. Now in response, India too has been constructing strategic railway lines near the China border. Four proposed lines, which together add up to about 1400 kilometers, define India's railway footprint in the region. But as these projects take shape, it is vital for India to ensure that timelines are met. Meanwhile, New Delhi must also continue to keep a close watch on China. Moving on now, the Bharti Janta Party has nothing to hide or be afraid of on the controversy over Adani Group. 
This is what Home Minister Amit Shah had to say in an interview with ANI. The interview has come amid the Hindenburg research report that alleged stock manipulation by companies within the Adani Group. The Supreme Court has taken the case of 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 the matter of the case 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 of कुछ छुपाने को नहीं है और ना किसी बात से डरने की जरूरत well not just that the home minister also claimed there is no competition for the bjp in 2024 lok sabha elections he said the nation is ready to bring prime minister modi back in power again principal opposition kise mante hain congress led by rahul gandhi ye to desh ki janta ne tay karna hai abhi to kisi ko principal opposition ka label janta ne lok sabha mein nahi diya hai next up maharashtra political crisis post the 2019 elections that came as a surprise to all was brought up yet again by deputy chief minister devendra fadnavis he claimed that ncp chief sharad pawar was aware of Ajit Pawar's short-lived defection to the BJP in 2019. Speaking at an event organized by our sister channel, TV9 Marathi, Devendra Fadnavis said that there was an offer from the NCP to form a government together and that it was after Sharad Pawar's go-ahead that this swearing-in took place. Me, Ajit Anantrao Pawar. We had an offer from the NCP that they needed a stable government and we should form such a government together. We decided to go ahead and hold talks. The talks happened with Sharad Pawar. Then things changed. You have seen how things changed. In all fairness, I want to state that Ajit Pawar took oath with me with honesty. But later on, NCP's strategy changed. Well, meanwhile, NCP Chief Sharad Pawar has outrightly denied the claim and said that he never thought that a gentleman like Farnavis would make such a statement that is based on falsehood. I felt that Devendra is a cultured man and a gentleman. I never thought that he would make such a baseless and false statement. Remember, it was one of the most dramatic political developments in the year 2019 that unfolded in Maharashtra after BJP's former ally Shiv Sena decided to quit the pre-poll alliance. Spotting an opportunity, Ajit Pawar had then joined hands with the BJP to form the government. However, failing to get enough number of NCP MLAs, the Fadnavis government fell soon and Ajit Pawar returned to the NCP. Take a look at this. Last Friday, a five-judge Constitution bench of the Supreme Court asked a nine-judge bench to examine the validity of the Dawoodi Bora practice of excommunicating its members from the community. At the heart of the Dawoodi Bora issue is a conflict between the rights of the community as a whole and the individuals who belong to it. The Bohras, a Shia Muslim sect, have been in India for over 400 years. Among the many powers granted to the leader is the right to excommunicate members who challenge his position. Now, excommunication means the member loses access to the Dawoodi Bora mosques and burial grounds. In the year 1949, the Bombay Prevention of Excommunication Act was enacted. It barred the practice of excommunication. The reasoning was that it robbed people of their legitimate rights and privileges as members of the community. But the 51st Dawoodi Bora leader, Sardar Sayyidna Tahir Saifuddin Sahib, challenged the law. In the year 1962, the Supreme Court upheld the claim of the 51st Dawoodi Bohra leader, saying the leader's position was essential to the community and his right to excommunicate wasn't a means of punishment but was a way of enforcing discipline. In the year 2016, Maharashtra passed the Protection of People from Social Boycott Act. It bars social boycott of a person or a group from a community. The law terms such acts as inhuman and a violation of fundamental rights. Now, six years after the Prevention of Social Boycott Act was passed, the Supreme Court said it will re-examine its 1962 order upholding the rights of the Dawoodi Bohra leader to excommunicate members. Moving ahead, it seems like it's more bad news for Pakistan. Already hit by very high food and energy costs, Islamabad now is preparing to impose more taxes on its people. And there is no other way, as Pakistan desperately needs the IMF loans as part of the bailout package. From preventing the country going bankrupt, 
Pakistan needs a $1.1 billion loan from the IMF, but the deal isn't going through. This amid an all-round crisis unfolding in Pakistan. One of the most pressing problems that Pakistan is facing as of now is the dwindling foreign reserve. The foreign exchange reserves have fallen to $2.9 billion. This is not even enough to cover three weeks of import. And to tide over the crisis, taxing Pakistanis is the only way out. To pay back to the IMF, should it lend to Pakistan, new taxes to the tune of 170 billion Pakistani rupees will be imposed on the taxpayers. Basically, if the IMF program resumes, it would also unlock other avenues of funding for Pakistan. But there is another risk from the increased taxes. The already spiraling inflation could get accelerated, and that is sure to break the backs of the already burdened common man in Pakistan. In January this year, the annual inflation in Pakistan soared to over 27%, the highest since 1975. On the back of it, the Pakistani rupee sank to a historic low of 275 against the US dollar. With these ominous signs, the road ahead for Pakistan is sure to be a tough one. With its increased focus on funding cross-border terror against India and keeping its army generals happy, it's high time that Pakistan acts in time before it's too late. On that note, this is the end of this edition of Top Angle. Do check out incisive news analysis and cutting-edge documentaries streaming only on News9+. Thanks for watching.